Good afternoon, one footballers. The international break is upon us. However, club football keeps on rolling around. And with more and more news every day, who better to talk us through it than Statman Dave, who joins me to talk specifically about Manchester United. Of course, his field of expertise. How are you doing today, Dave? Yeah, I'm absolutely excellent. That result against Newcastle really got me through the international break. Without that, I'd be pretty upset right now. I, I'm not sure whether or not it's completely going to change your views, but I guess we'll figure out. It's almost one of the things we should have asked you these questions before and after the game. <laughs> but I mean, how much has changed, we don't know. So let's jump into it where obviously everyone talking about Manchester United these days will do with Jose Mourinho. I mean, how can something go so drastically wrong considering that nothing really changed over the summer? I think that maybe have been a bit of the problem that nothing really changed. I think United were 19 points behind Manchester City last season. So you think in second place, a great achievement with that squad. But the investment hmm. that we've seen from the likes of Liverpool this season and City the season before, if you want to go from that second position or maybe third to fourth position to first, you need to spend. You need to sign fullbacks, you need to sign centre halves, you need to sign goalkeepers. You basically need to complete your squad. And I think that was the biggest thing for Manchester United over the summer, that they didn't do enough. I think the signing of Fred, fantastic. I think the signing of Delo, great signing. But it really mm. lacked a centre back. So is that, does that mean that Liverpool and City are now the benchmark of what you should be doing in the transfer window? Because the same thing is being levelled at Spurs. Right, and they're two points off the top at the moment. And okay, things aren't going as well as they hoped, but they're still not in a completely dire position. I mean, maybe as the season takes its toll, they will be. But do you have to commit, you know, the hundreds of millions that Liverpool and City commit every summer just to keep moving? What does that mean for the rest of the league? I think it's a different one. It's an interesting one. Obviously, City and Liverpool are probably playing for the title, should we say. That's their... That's what they want to win right now. And I think you've got to solve those problems. Look, Liverpool had Karius in goal for the Champions League final. Two absolute, you know, mistakes in a way. Let the ball go into the back of the net. They lose that final. Yeah. They've gone out there. They've signed Alisson, one of the best keepers in Europe. They've also looked at midfield. They think they need a crater in there. And Naby Keita's come in. They've also got Fabinho to add a bit of depth there. And I think that's the real hmm. interesting side with, the, with Liverpool, especially this summer, is they've gone out and they've kind of solved their problems. City did the same thing. Under Guardiola, you need your fullbacks to be good. You need your fullbacks to attack. They went from the likes of Kolarov, uh, Gael Clichy, Sagner to, you know, two of arguably the best fullbacks in the world, Benjamin Mendy and Carl Walker. Yeah, Mendy was yeah. injured, but you're getting that quality. Spurs slightly different in a way where what they did well was re-sign their key players. They didn't lose anyone. So it was arguably a different window for Spurs than Liverpool, than City. And I think what you're seeing from this is if you want to compete for that Premier League title, you've got to spend. You've got to solve the problems in your squad. You've got to analyse what you're doing. This is a little bit weak. Let's go out there and spend the money. And unfortunately, Manchester United didn't do that over the summer. So I think you've hit the nail on the head there with the solve the problems. So when we come to this, whose problem is it to solve? Who is analysing what's gone on the season before? Who is looking for the new players to come in? And who's getting the deal done? Do we shift the blame with Mourinho? Or like he said, you know, he didn't get the players that he wanted towards the end of the transfer window. Do you look at the board? Whose job is it to make sure you can compete? I think that's one of the biggest problems. Whose job is it? I think there's a lot of finger pointing. I think that someone needs to take command of that situation. Of course, Mourinho wants a certain type of player. He wants a Perisic. He wants a Adeverald. He wants an older defender. Maybe the where United want to go signing all these young players is different. a different vision to Mourinho's yeah. vision. But what is lacked is someone to bring all that together, a director of football. You know, you take what Ferguson used to do at Manchester United, who was the director of football, the manager, the coach, everything. You know, he could do all those sort of jobs. And I think with what Manchester United should have done post-Ferguson, maybe go down to a model of having a head coach and a director of football. A director of football to stay there for maybe, you know, your nine, ten years to, to push mm. the vision of the club, what do United want to be as a footballing side, and getting the signings for that head coach. But I think what we've seen with Man United recently is, um, you know, Ed Woodward does a lot of good commercial stuff, but maybe in the transfer window, he's not done too well. A lot of panic buys over the last few windows. It kind of goes back to, you know, maybe signing Angel Di Maria. Yeah, no, or Anthony Martial, kind of panic buys. Oh, yeah. Obviously, Martial's a good player, a very young, talented player, but they bought him on the last day of the window. And I think that collective organisation from top to bottom with manager, board, and who they want to sign is completely broken at the moment. Mourinho saying, you know, look, I want to get Harry Maguire, I want to get Toby Alderweireld. You know, Kula Bali was linked with Manchester United as well. And without getting any of those, I don't think Mourinho trusts Eric Bay. He doesn't trust Victor Lindelof. And the only guy that's kind of stayed in that back four is Chris Smalling. And we all know that Chris Smalling can have some fantastic runs of games. But that mistake mm. is always there. But why does this... I'm, I'm almost 
sort of in a little bit of disbelief, as I'm sure you saw Gary Neville's sort of rant on it uh, the other night when he was covering the Brighton game. I don't understand how this can happen at such a massive club. You know, how is it that the, the board can say, you know, we're buying in these young players for the future of Manchester United, where the manager's sitting there saying, no, I want to win now. I want experience now. I want my Alderweireld's, my Perisic's now. How can there be such a massive mismatch in communication and in views and expect them both to go forwards? Well, I think that's kind of, you know, that is the problem in a way. But, you, you know, you bring Mourinho in to win. I think post-Ferguson, yeah. you needed a personality. I don't think David Moyes had that personality. I think Louis van Gaal's personality wasn't quite right for the club in terms of he had a vision and philosophy, but it wasn't a Manchester United philosophy. It was a philosophy that mm. worked in 1995 for Ajax and they won the European Cup, <laughs> but that was a long time ago. Shade with, on van Gaal, yeah. <laughs> you know, got to, got to stab the knife in a few times. But with Mourinho, yeah. you know, that personality, that ability to be in a way bigger than the club has cost the club in a way where he's this guy that's mm. a big winner that's going to come in and he'll change things, he'll throw people out, he'll get things sorted. And United needed that. And then there's a number of players that have been, you know, in the United team for a few seasons that arguably weren't up to the United standard. They've now been moved on. But in a way, that's kind of the problem that instead of looking for a manager that's maybe a young manager, like sort of what Hoffenheim have done with Nagelsmann, you know, get a young yeah. guy in that's been through the club at 19 level, comes up to the first team, knows the players, knows the club. That would have worked a little bit better for United, but may have not mm. been right for United, if you get where I'm coming from. I like the idea yeah. of signing young players and promoting youth at United. That's the vision of Manchester United. You know, United used to not go out and buy Galacticos. They'd make Galacticos. You think Cristiano Ronaldo, David Beckham. But yeah, now they're in that course, market yeah. where they're going for that instant success. And that's kind of what you've done when you flip the Mourinho card, when you're playing the game. And that's the interesting side. Yeah. I don't think... It's all been aligned. And maybe now, because of the, the mistakes of the post-Ferguson era, we will start to see better decisions from Manchester United Football Club. So, so I mean, taking away then the sort of the board side of it, the, the official side of it, and looking onto the pitch, because once the transfer window shut, that's all you've got to do. That is, that is it. Once the transfer window shut, you're not bringing anyone in. You can complain and you can bitch and moan all you like, but it, he's the manager. He's coaching the players. So surely after a while, you know, he'd say, you know what? I'm going to forget about the fact we didn't sign who we wanted and get these players doing the right thing on the pitch. Is this fundamentally him as a coach or are the players to blame? Or do you need to get rid of the likes of Smalling? Do you know, you're saying he's got rid of a few players. I still think there could be massive improvements in the United squad. I think a centre-back was definitely needed. Um, you know, and if players aren't pulling their weight, the likes of Sanchez, Pogba, Sanchez, who was a Mourinho player who signed him in January, isn't it up to him to get the best out of these guys? I think it is, yeah. But again, with Mourinho, what you get with Mourinho, if you don't back him in this third year, we've seen it before, Real Madrid, Chelsea, mm -hmm. pretty much implodes. And you've got to know that as, as a club employing Mourinho, that if you don't back Mourinho, this will happen. And whether you like yeah. it or not, this is just what happens. But, you know, you kind of agree, you see some of the performances, they're very inconsistent, United are. You see first half versus second half, it's a very different team, even though it's the same yeah. players. Take the 3-2 that United uh, you know, beat City last season, stopping Manchester City winning the league against their rivals. That was mm. so sort of polar opposite in terms of performances. But what you've got with United is a good key squad. And I think there's players in there like uh, Fred that was brought in from Shakhtar Nets that needs to be integrated yeah, into the squad properly. Sign. A good signing, a really good player, but needs a little bit of game time in the Premier League, will make a few mistakes. But, and again, where Mourinho is right now, I don't think he can afford it. You know, managers sort of go back to their default when they're struggling. They go back to, we're going to be a Mourinho side, rigid, hard to break down, good mm. on the counter-attack. I think that's the problem. United have never been good on the counter-attack since Ferguson's left. And if you set up yeah. like Mourinho, you need to kill people on the break. I can't, you know, I couldn't count on, on three or four hands how many times United have broken against teams and then literally played a backwards pass. And it's sort of that ingrained mentality from Louis Van Gaal's United that still hasn't been shaken off in a way that we're still seeing under Mourinho that's making Mourinho's counter-attack not good enough. Whether that's down to Mourinho working in training and that 100%. And I think that could be something that Mourinho takes on. That look, if we're going to be the best team in the world, let's make our break very, very good. If we're going to sit deep, counter-attack, that's good. We don't need to press yeah. if we're counter-attacking and allowing that space. But if we don't press, then we're going against what the rest of the world is doing in football. So there's all these I, factors I, that are all together making this big yeah. pile of Mourinho potentially falling off the cliff this season. But this is what I don't understand. When you've got the players, when you've got the tactics, sorry, set out by Mourinho, looking at individual instances within a game, surely that comes down to the player. The likes of Pogba, whether he's been told to do this or that, if he sees a good pass, he's going to play it. 
I mean, there's not, there's only so much that you can remember once you get out onto the pitch. Do players like Pogba need to go? Does likes of Sanchez need to go? Smalling, is he not good enough? Has Valencia had an argument too many with Mourinho? If these are the guys that aren't continuing, aren't pulling off his instructions on the pitch, do you get rid of them? I think you've got to look at the wage that they take as well. I think that's a big thing about oh, football. Oh, yeah, for sure. You, you know, Sanchez on half a million is a crime. You, I have you, to add that You in pay there. these guys this money, there should be a level of performance. And maybe that's the problem with United right now is that they're paying people too much for not getting what they're delivering. And that's an issue. Mm. And you've got to look at some of the factors there. You know, you take Pogba, for example, can be absolutely unplayable, but can also lose the ball in his own half by trying to take too yeah. many players on where he needs to play quick. Whether that's going to be an evolution of Paul Pogba this season where he plays a little bit deeper like we saw a little bit against Newcastle where he started from a very, very deep position. Maybe that's what you need to do with Paul Pogba, getting him involved in that deep area but making him play quickly. Yeah. But then you're looking at Sanchez. There needs to be a system around that allows Sanchez to either play as a centre-forward or as a number 10. That's the best football Sanchez has played in his recent career at Arsenal when he scored 30 goals and got 10 assists. He played as a centre-forward. Obviously, with Lukaku's not bad form, but I think he's tired. I think playing at the World Cup, instantly coming back for United, he looks tired. He's not had a break. And that's why we're seeing him maybe not at the same heights as last season. And again, there's a mm. lot of different factors within this team, but it is Mourinho's job to go, look, right, we've got this guy that can play there. He can play here. This is the system that we're bringing together to go. And I arguably would say a 4-2-3-1 with Sanchez as a number 10, Pogba maybe as a deep midfielder could be yeah. how United play. And it, it is on Mourinho, but it's also on these players turning up. You know, look at Anthony Martial. Sometimes you can't get near him. Sometimes he'll take you on. Sometimes he's, you know, he'll just tiptoe down the byline and get an assist. But other times it, he can't string a two-yard pass. But it is the they're young players. That's the other thing. There's all this, there's so much that's involved in what United are doing right now that it's very difficult to isolate one problem where it's, this, there's yeah. too many problems that United need to solve at the moment. But with someone like Mourinho, you've got to expect that if there's one guy that could solve it, he could be a guy that can do that. So in that case, in terms of the in terms of the saviour or who to bring in or who's going to help Manchester United, certainly on the pitch, out of this, would you rule out any youngsters coming through? Do you think it's going to have to be into the transfer market for Mourinho? Because I've seen so many players think with United. It's obvious that the funds are there and it's obvious they can go ahead and buy whoever they want. Lukaku and Pogba, obviously over 150 million between them. But when it comes to players that you're going to bring in, do you need to go out and buy these big names or do you need more of a team player? You know, I see Fred as someone who can keep the midfield ticking whilst the more elaborate players like Pogba, like Sanchez can go forward and do their thing. And especially with defence, do you need someone who maybe isn't a star-studded name? I've heard of Granqvist being, you know, rumoured uh, to join United, which for me seems even a bit further left than normal. But do you need someone else who's more of a team guy rather than a list of big names, big wage players? I think you do, and I think that's what United looked for in the summer. Fred and Delo, both signings that aren't big players that are going to come in and really improve the side. I think with someone like Granqvist, wouldn't be for me. I think you look at Sweden's yeah. form with Lindelof and Granqvist in the World Cup. Yeah, they were great. Yeah. They only played a handful of games, though. The Premier League is very different to, to that stage. And I don't think Granqvist is a guy that United should bring in. But again, yeah. you mentioned like young players, like likes of Angel Gomez, Chong. Players and Delo, let's say. There are three young players there that could massively improve one United's right-hand side. Chong um, as a winger, Delo as a fullback. Yeah. You're also looking at Angel Gomez could come in on the left-hand side, number 10, whatever, that need a little bit more game time. And I'd like to see them in the first team. I think that's something that could be very important for but, Manchester United. But doesn't that then go again what, what we just said? It goes against Mourinho's whole winning now sort of ethos behind his game. He's not going to give these youngsters the time. I'm surprised that he signed Delo, you know, at such a young age. Um... With, with definitely the kind of fact that he's not going to be playing them from the start. I think the thing with Delo, what Mourinho said about him, you know, he's the best young fullback in his age group. And I kind of agree going forward, he's so technically gifted. And I think that someone like that could be actually pushed in with, you know, the Antonio Valencia problem apparently with Mourinho. You could see him coming in. But in terms of a saviour in January, mm. Koulibaly from Napoli, get the checkbook yeah. out. Sign him up. He, you know, it would be a fantastic signing for Mourinho. Mourinho was, was apparently spoke to Fabio Capello uh, over the summer and said, Koulibaly, one of the number one targets for centre-half, would instantly improve United's defence. Yeah. Not only can Koulibaly play on, the, play on the ball, of course, being so good for Sarri's uh, Napoli, I think only Insignia and um, Jorginho completing more passes than him. But also yeah. fantastic in the tackle, has won 15 out of his 16 tackles in Serie A this season. You look at his performance against Liverpool in the Champions League, best player on the pitch for me. Fantastic at say, dealing the, with the, the movement, got everything. absolutely everything. And I think the saviour would be Koulibaly. If, I mean, 
no pressure, regardless of what the price tag is. Being the savior of Manchester United is sure to uh, sure to wear on him ever so slightly. But it looks like a big enough lad to deal with it. <laughs> um, well, I think that's all we've got time for, though, for the moment. But thank you so much for coming to speak to us again, Dave. It's, it, it's always interesting to see what you've got to say, taking a slightly different angle on United. I hope for your sake things get better, <laughs> but it does provide a lot of fun on social media, the whole Mourinho saga, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, you but, know, uh, hopefully it gets better. That's, that's the only thing I, I can agree with yeah. that. Well, thanks very much anyway, and uh, I'm sure we'll speak to you soon again. Cheers. Awesome. So that's all we've got time for today, One Footballers. Thanks for joining me and for Dave. Make sure you can click here to check out all the other football videos that we've got going on on the channel. But until next time, we'll see you guys later.